Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, we still have people coming in. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Good to see everybody. Awesome, fantastic. More people coming in. If you are interested in connecting with folks, drop your contact info into the chat. We will have a brief shining moment of introductions in just a moment as people are coming in. Um, but uh, let's let's start off with uh, where is everyone today? Tell us where you are. Drop that into the chat. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. All right. I think we're just going to roll with it. I think we have quorum here. And hi, everybody. Welcome. If I don't know you yet, my name is Bobby Carlton. I am the editor-in-chief publisher of Lioness Magazine. Hello to my retail therapy from the pandemic. And also the founder of Innovation Women, which is my entrepreneurial venture. I come to you not just as the media, but also an entrepreneur myself. And I am here today with some members of the Lioness and Innovation Women team, including our fabulous managing editor, Laura Grant. Laura, I'd like to say hi. Hi, everyone. It's great to see some regulars, some new people. Um, I'm excited to get to talk with you all. Fantastic. And we are going to be talking today about things oriented around teams and building teams and hiring people, retaining them. And even if you are a solo entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you still probably are bringing in support systems and people. So this is helpful for everybody. So we are also going to start things off, like taking a look at that agenda. Maybe we can uh, hop over to the next slide there. Is it going to go? Dun, dun, dun. We're still seeing the, there we go. Just so everybody knows, uh, our networking guidelines, always good. And if you can remain muted until we call upon you, that definitely helps keep things organized. And also that raise your hand function for if you have questions or input into any of the discussions, we always prioritize questions. We want to help everybody with their questions. And if there are any promotional things or connecting with people, wins or whatever, drop those into the chat. But above all else, remain respectful, pleasant, happy, all those good things. All right, next slide, please. And still more people are joining us today. So what we are doing today is 15 second introduction, and we are only going to do that for five minutes. So we will be doing that in order and the introductions will come about based on the order of the raise your hand. So you're going to use that raise your hand function. We've got 15 second introductions. And if you put things onto gallery mode, that will show you the blue sky timer, which will count down 15 seconds. And you guys know me, I am not shy about interrupting people. So go over 15 seconds. I'm going to get out my buzzer. I don't have a buzzer, but I'll make one up. All right. So we are going to start with those 15 second introductions. They are only going to go for five minutes. Then we are going to move on to our other activities, which is the group discussion and then the breakout rooms. So we are also, I will click on the, and ask you to unmute when it is your turn next. So that way you get a little bit of a heads up that you are, I'm coming for you. All right, Kat, you are up first today. All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Kat Rogers. I am based in the D.C. area. I'm the founder of Mariposa Mastermind, a company that transitions women from being career business uh, focused to career business and mommy focused. And I am also the podcast host of We Are So You Can. Awesome. All right, Rosie. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosie Zelenskas. I am the founder and CEO of No Woman Left Behind, and I empower women in the corporate space to advance their careers with intention and confidence. Thank you. 
Awesome. Carol Ann. And uh, hold on one second, Carol Ann. Liam, if you can pull down the shared uh, screen for the moment, that would be terrific. There we go. Okay. All right. Carol Ann, you are up. Hi, I'm Carol Ann. I'm a historian and I share with people how they can put hundreds of years of leadership success to work for them right now. Awesome. Chris Carey. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a reinvention expert. I run a community called the Reinvention Journey, where we talk about all the reinventions that happen personally and professionally when you run your own business. So I look forward to seeing you. Fantastic. Pooja. Hi, uh, my name is Pooja. I'm the owner of the Content Repurposer, where I help authors use their books' uh, content and repurpose it into different mediums for a bigger impact. Fantastic. Orly. Hi, I'm the brand whisperer. Uh, I think we lost you there audio wise, Orly. You have we heard you at first, but then you there Can you go. You Try again. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, I hit the button. Hi, I'm the brand whisperer. I help startups and solopreneurs clarify and communicate their zone of genius so they can attract more of their ideal clients and grow their business. All right, awesome. All right, Suzanne Kratz. Hello, I am a life coach and I help people connect their head to their body so that they're not in analysis paralysis all the time and um, can feel encouraged to go after what they want. Fantastic. Manuela? Hi, I'm a former breast cancer surgeon turned life coach for midlife women who want to reinvent themselves because being nice all the time and people pleasing everyone is going to make you sick. So my mission <laughs> is to help women remove the patriarchal BS from their brains and just be themselves without guilt or apologies. Fantastic. Kim Sterling. Good morning. I'm Kim Sterling, certified <clears throat> financial planner and founder of Next Gen Wealth Partners, where I'm ushering in the next generation of women who want to make sense of money in a man's world. Awesome. Helen Johnson. Good morning. I'm Helen Johnson, as Bobby nicely said, and I offer media training, speaker coaching, and other impact communications for executives, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, authors, and experts. And I am a speaker myself. Nice to meet all of you. Awesome. Kim Proctor. Hello, I'm Kim Proctor. I'm a product consultant. I help companies improve customer engagement by uncovering product relevance. Thank you. Terry Beltran. Hi, I'm Terry Beltran with Beltran Media. I coach small business owners as far as reaching their ideal customer to be visible and bring their revenue. And I also consult corporations on multicultural marketing. Awesome. Colette. Okay, as I'm trying to plug in my PC, <laughs> I am Colette of uh, the Colette Effect. I help companies uh, create their strategy for business development and brand development. Awesome. Rachel Winchester. Hi, my name is Rachel Winchester. Most people call me Win. I am a web designer and I make web page presentations. I actually just came out with a workshop called Killing PowerPoint, uh, Designing Web Page Presentations. Um, I'm also a live streamer, LinkedIn live streams. Awesome. All right. And again, for anybody who's just joining us, we've got room for like one more minute of introductions. If you are interested in doing your intro, use that raise your hand function. Otherwise, we will move on to more exciting things. And we have all kinds of fun stuff planned for you today. So, Lindsay, hello. Hello, everyone. I just learned about the networking event, so I'm not prepared to go on camera just yet. But I'm a trademark attorney um, helping small businesses and entrepreneurs trademark and protect their brands. I did put my information in the chat. Um, it is something that's definitely needed. There is no um, right or wrong time to reach out if you have questions. Um, so pl please feel free to do so. And nice awesome. to meet everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, now we can bring those uh, slides back up, Liam, because we are going to look at uh, what is next on the on the agenda. Look at that group discussions on hiring <laughs> challengings, challengings, challenges, okay. maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right, put the put these slides away. I don't want to look at that anymore. Oops, you can't trust me for for proofreading our stuff. Um, but we have a survey, a poll, so to speak. So 
What we're asking is tell us about your biggest challenge when it comes to hiring help. Is it finding qualified candidates? Is it retaining talent? Is it managing remote or hybrid teams, balancing the salary and the budget, navigating the legal framework for hiring? I got to tell you, having people in multiple states, whoo, that's a, that's a trip and a half. And also creating company culture, positive company culture. So these are good things to think about when you are thinking about your team or your extended team in some cases. <laughs> All right. So we're going to leave that poll open for just another second or two and make sure that we've got everybody able to participate in it. And yep, absolutely. Information into the chat, whole bunch of stuff. If there are other things, other challenges that you have with your team building, your team retaining, Great opportunity to drop those into the chat as well. Oh, we know that the teams, teams are, teams are a thing. Absolutely. Okay. And we got everybody, just about everybody in there, everybody who can be in there. All right. I think we're going to close that down and share those results. So Interesting. Balancing salary and budget. Always the money. Always the money. Navigating the legal framework, creating a positive company culture. So it's, it's, oh my gosh, there are multiple challenges. <laughs> that absolutely is not a surprise You're that there are you. so many challenges. <laughs> What's that? everyone's retaining pretty good that's like no nobody is everyone retaining their talent pretty good i i do wonder i mean is that part and parcel of the fact that there have been massive layoffs and i think people are probably a little bit nervous in terms of uh you know could i find something else so maybe we haven't gotten that far yet Maybe we haven't gotten that far yet. I was going to say, in the past, when I did have people that I hired, I struggled to retain them, but it was usually because of the budget and not being able to offer them the raises to match what they deserved mm -hmm. that caused people to go elsewhere. Yep. I mean, let's talk a little bit about what makes your concern. You know, obviously, so many of us have different concerns. So challenging. You know, what did you name your big challenge and why? This is what we're going to talk about when we get into the breakout rooms. But for our main conversation, our main room conversation, before we get into breakouts, let's talk about what makes these things so challenging. Does anybody want to jump in and share? If you can use that raise your hand function, that would be awesome. Terry, tell us a little bit about your team and what the challenges are for you. Well, my team is one <laughs> and that's a challenge already in itself. I subcontract. I don't actually, for a long time, I've subcontract for everything, web designers, graphic artists, um, videographers, but I manage the whole core project and the branding and the um, project. I still want to today do that even, but as a consultant, I don't need to have a team that works a little bit different because I work with, when I work with corporations. Um, my challenge, you know, with this is really letting go. I mean, I think I'm like, I don't know, unfortunately, I'd probably be one of those hovering bosses, but I actually, you know, want to make sure everything's right. And I'm just kind of like, you know, cause I'm, that's what I, I'm kind of like a project manager in my own, as far as really overseeing a lot of people in different areas, but making sure it's right for the client. But so I'm just used to that. So I wonder how can I detach myself from that? And I thought maybe starting with the VA and then even that, I'm not sure how we're like, what should I decide to let go and how to slowly make sure that they are going to be good at doing. Okay. And Orly, is this a, a response or another? A response. Another? Yeah, yeah, go for it but then. It and, you know, if, if people have answers or suggestions, again, use that raise your hand function. It makes the conversation orderly. So I was going to say that, you know, hiring a VA is the smartest thing I've ever done. Um, it took me a long time 
<laughs> Thanks, Kat. <laughs> Took me a long time to figure this out, but I think, you know, um, to what, what um, um, Terry was saying, it's like, it, you have to do it all yourself in the beginning so that you know what you actually need help with. That's what I found. And I also found that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. And when you find the right fit with somebody, like right now, I actually am very happy with my VA, you know, you give them the instructions and they can do it so much faster than me, but they're doing back end stuff. They're not doing, at this point, I'm not ready yet to hire a social media manager because I'm doing it all myself, but that's definitely, that will be the next step. So I would say two things. One is make sure you're really clear on what you need. Make sure it's something that you actually know, you know, you understand what it is, but you, your time is much more valuable. Usually it's back end stuff or things that take up a lot, churn up a lot of time. Um, and then finding the right fit. And, you know, it took me a couple people to find the right person. So yeah, that's that. And for anybody else looking for VAs or the VI conversation, there is a whole bunch of um, information in the chat. So um, that is always helpful. Kat, do you have an answer as well? Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what Orly said. I have both uh, a VA service that I use and I just send off all the, the things that I know Um one, it's not something that I have to do. Like I have to do the videos for my company because I'm the face. I can't send that off, but I don't have to do a lot of R&D. I don't have to do the research so I can send off, oh, hey, I need to know about places that I can do a conference at in blankety blank city or what I don't need to do that research. I can send that all off to a VA and that can all be done. But I also um, just last month started hiring a PA. So I, a friend of mine, her daughter's going to college nearby. And I'm like, you know what? I, I know her daughter. I know she's very similar to me. She likes to organize stuff. I don't like organizing my stuff, but I love organizing other people's stuff. That's really fun. And I brought her in and she did a ton of work for me. So I'm like, once a month, I'm going to have her come do work and send, e like there are certain emails that I have an, a, a virtual assistant account set up for, but I have been doing a lot of it because I haven't been able to let all of that go yet, but I can have her do that once a month and like take care of all that stuff. So it's just kind of bit by bit figuring out where you're um, comfortable with. And I can talk about hiring too, but I did that not from my company, but as a hiring agent in other places, Got if, it. Okay. if that's helpful. Okay. Kim? I'm curious to know if any of you have any experience with um, hiring interns and if so, how that went. So if you have an answer, if you can raise your hand, I will also say that I have a lot of experience with that as well, but I'd like to hear from other folks. Helen? Oh, you surprised me. Um, I ran intern programs for organizations that I worked for. And now what I'm doing is I'm offering and I hate to say they're unpaid, but it's just because I've just launched unpaid internships to a couple of young women who are like a year out of school. They may have a job, but they're not doing exactly what they want to be doing. And they would like to build their own a portfolio of professional work. So I am having them help me build out my professional work. Um, we're working on a podcast. We've been doing some webinars. Um, and this gives them an opportunity to and I'd love to say I'm rolling in it and I would like to pay them. I prefer to pay an intern, but um, these young women um, have come to me because I've known them for other reasons, either as a former intern or um, through alumni networking where they came to me and were asking me for advice and other things. And we brainstormed how to build something out for their portfolio. And then it became working with me to build something out with my name on it. So they would get that opportunity. That, that doesn't work for everybody, but I think you have to be clear what the needs are. I'm only asking like 10 hours a week because I know they're working elsewhere. Um, but there are other ways to do it, but that's one way. Okay. Kat? Um, interns have always been hit or miss for me. Um, it's like, I've had some interns that are amazing and genius, but I couldn't control the hiring process. They were always given to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you can control the hiring process, that might be way better because 
I mean, I've had some interns that like couldn't alphabetize and couldn't put things in numerical order. And I'm like, you're a college graduate and you don't know your ABCs and one to 10 and I'm going to cry. And they're like, oh my God, what's this thing? I'm like, it's called a fax machine. I understand it's archaic, but you type in a number and you put something down and you hit send. It doesn't take a rocket scientist and they couldn't figure that out. So I, uh, if you can control that process, that hiring process, you might have better luck than I did. But like, I, I mean, I had some where I would give them huge projects and have them working with MTV and big clients and they were genius. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to either marry this person to keep them in house or somehow find some way to, to staple them to my side. But I've also had people where I'm like, I swear to God, a box of rocks would get more done. Um, so I just, if you can continue control the process that would be really helpful okay megan um so i lecture at a number of top-notch universities um, um johns hopkins uh, harvard uh, mit and i pull all of my interns from these are all graduate classes by the way not undergrad and i pull all of my interns i have never had a bad intern every one of them have been top-notch uh, and I, I volunteer my time for these lectures and sitting on panels and such because that is a major recruiting place for me, not just for interns, but I've pulled in a, quite a few employees from that location. But if you're lecturing at grads, grad level at some top-notch schools, you're going to get top-notch top interns and eventually employees. Awesome. Teresa. Um, so I've had a couple of rounds of interns and it's always good to kind of connect with your local schools, but there's also a tool that's called handshake that students sign up for when they're looking or open for work. So I feel like that's a good resource. But one thing I wanted to mention is there's kind of two general types of internships. Um, one is the paid, um, and the other one is non-paid. And a lot of times, um, students can get credit. Um, they're they're not supposed to get paid because they're getting credit. Um, so if they're doing an internship class, that's that's a good opportunity. And I feel like young people we're seeing in the industry tend to be better with like social media and and those kinds of projects. And that was it. All right, Terry. Uh, yeah, I've always done interns. I believe in giving back because. I was an intern when I was in college. And so I think it made a big difference as far as me getting into broadcasting and also getting back out and because I was in automotive marketing. And then I ended up getting back to broadcasting when things went downhill for automotive. So it was very beneficial. So I believe in giving back. My interns have been, they've come everywhere. I've had them remote and everything. And uh, I've had great success with them and not all of none of, none of them were really paid. They were all doing it for credits. So that's the other thing. Um, I don't know. I just really like them. I'd like to go back to doing that. I haven't done it in a while. Awesome. All right. When? Yeah, I, I routinely work with interns from Swarthmore college, uh, which is my alma mater. And the great thing about that program is that the school pays them and I don't have to, which is amazing. But I do under, it, it's a liberal arts school and I try and give them a, an opportunity to learn something that they can't. So like business design. Um, so I would, my advice would be that, you know, give them low risk projects in case, I, I don't know, maybe midterms didn't go well and they need to drop the internship or, you know, something they, you know, they couldn't wrap their hand or head around the project. So yeah, low risk, low risk projects. Okay. And Suzanne. Hi, everyone. We actually have some amazing um, Lioness interns in this conversation right now. Um, our program, we're working on some pieces that will be in the magazine that talk about our program and strategies for building out the program. We do, like you said, when um, folks start with low risk projects and um, eventually well, you know, once their skills are there and their job crafting is done so that they can we can see where they fit, what their best niche is, they always get long-term projects that they can always go back to in addition to their regular task. Bobby always pays them. And um, we have just some awesome people that I've had the chance to get to know. So um, hopefully, um, if there are any questions about the program, you will let us know and we will make sure to build out you know, the hiring strategies, um, 
local universities are a great place to go. Like when said, they might pay the students. And so, and finding out where their best fit is, is really important too, so that they can build out their skills. Cause that's one of the challenges of having an internship program is onboarding and building out their skills so that they can contribute because it's not an immediate thing where somebody can contribute to your work. It's a lot of support required initially. Yeah. And I would also say that um, one of the things that I've done over the years is make sure that while interns have daily projects and short-term projects, that they also have kind of waiting in the wings, longer term projects that I hate to say it, I might disappear for a day or two because I'm doing a speaking engagement somewhere or I'm traveling. So if they have short-term projects, but then they always have long-term projects mm -hmm. that they can go back to when I disappear and they've finished everything that they've been given, that is always just a nice strategy for making sure that they're not sitting around twiddling their thumbs. So. Totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other folks with other challenges that they wanted to address in the in the big group or get feedback on, what challenge did you select from our little poll? And is it something that uh, people can share and uh, address? So, and if you do use that raise your hand function, that helps us get uh, all connected and organized. Well, um. Laura, what do you think? Should we head off into breakout rooms and share a little bit about what we are going to be addressing in the breakout rooms? Absolutely. Yeah. So the breakout rooms, we're going to have a couple of different questions that you can go through. It's up to the groups where you want to start. We kind of have a suggested flow, but we want you guys to be able to choose what's most important to where you are. So we're going to be pasting a link to a uh, PowerPoint in the chat. And if you don't have access to it, um, a lot of members on the team will have it. Um, and you will see some discussion questions. We're gonna put you all in breakout rooms, give you a chance to talk about what you chose as your biggest challenge, why it's considered your biggest challenge, and share some more specialized advice in, um, in, in smaller groups. So we're gonna be sending you all to breakout rooms in just a second. All right, Liam, how we doing there? Got to move everybody around, make sure the rooms are somewhat balanced and a member of our <laughs> team is going into the breakout rooms with yes. you wherever possible. And uh, the breakout questions, you know, number one, what did you name as your biggest challenge and why? Why, how do you overcome your challenges with hiring or retention? And what did, what made you comfortable bringing somebody onto your team? Like I have some certain signals that I use. Um, what makes you comfortable bringing someone onto your team and how did you know it was the right time? And then what is your secret for keeping your remote slash hybrid or far away teams connected? So, hey. All right, Liam, are we ready? So I'm opening these breakout rooms right now. Okay. Awesome. Suzanne? Um, be on the lookout for social media posts today that will ask you to tag um, your business and yourself after today. So we were talking about that in our small group. We really want to build out those connections for you. So I'll drop the LinkedIn, Linus LinkedIn for you. Awesome. All right. Now we, we forgot to remind everybody to assign a spokesperson so if there is anybody who wants to volunteer on behalf of their room to share with the big room, that would be amazing. And, you know, like raising your hand. Did anybody yeah. have any big learnings they wanted to share? Any insights, any helpful tips, any uh, main conversations that took place? Of course, people are have to leave a little bit early. So <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody has next meetings. Um, I do have some notes from our room. I, you know, I had Teresa, Pooja, Marina, Felicia, Orly, and myself. And 
you know, like there's a lot that goes into how we hire and when we make the decision to hire and whom we hire. You know, do we hire part-time people? Do we hire a virtual assistant or a personal assistant? Felicia, you want to chime in on this? Yes, I wanted to share with the big group how you were very helpful with the hiring an attorney to kind of put together a package for an NDA, mm -hmm. proper offer letter, and also the employment agreement, even though we're hiring contractors, especially when we're trying to cover HIPAA compliant materials. So like I was sharing with you, that's been one of my biggest challenges, not just hiring anybody. So that was a big win for me today to get that information. Yeah. And I invested in a package early on when I was starting to hire people so that my offer letter says the proper things for Massachusetts, which is where we are based. Uh, we also have a contractor contract. Sounds so redundant, doesn't it? And we also have a non-disclosure agreement that any full-time employees need to sign and any contractors need to sign. And they are two different things. So there is an employment agreement for full-time people and there is an employment agreement for contractors and different NDAs as well. So Orly? Um, yeah, I was in, in the same room, but I um, I wanted to um, share a suggestion from Pooja, which is a really great suggestion that when you're ready to hire someone, um, to record certain tasks and how you do them. And uh, she uses Loom um, uh, to do that. But I thought that was a really great suggestion because instead of having to have, you know, it's easier if you have a video because you can stop it, you can replay it. Um, and and actually reminded me that I had a VA who, who you know, my VA actually does that. So when she figures things out, she'll send me a video. So I have I have that. So just wanted to share that with the group. That's a great suggestion. And you can also narrate your videos so that you're explaining it as you go along and you're getting your work done at the same time. <laughs> so uh, another thing we were talking about was, you know, the need to outsource, but you're working in the business at the same time as you're working on the business. So you kind of need to outsource a lot of tasks but you also need to train them at the same time. And it's it's incredibly time consuming to, to do that. So, you know, you have to set aside extra time and, you know, what is our most important asset as entrepreneurs? All together now, my time. <laughs> your time is your most valuable resource. So having it set up so that you can hire somebody else to help you is incredibly important. Anybody in the rooms talk about hiring and when you hire or how you hire? I'm going to I'm going to start picking on people and calling upon them because uh Natalie, what happened in your room? We talked a lot about um our businesses and things, and not as much about hiring, although we did talk about some VAs and, you know, best practices for um, uh, and what people are doing. So I'm probably not articulating it as well as I should, but we were introducing and learning about each other for a little bit of the time. And then first hire VAs or first hire, you know, what's good practices and things like that. So that was kind of the highlight, but I welcome um, Kim or Colette or, you know, any of the other one, any of the other members that were there mm -hmm. um, to chime in. You did a good job. It was kind of uh, over. It wasn't specific. It was a little bit of everything. Right. And it was networking and getting to know one another. So. Absolutely. All right, Megan, how about you? You got that, that intern thing nailed. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we talked about hiring when your time is of essence and you, there's, a project coming up where there's expertise either that you don't have yourself like you're 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 not an expert in it or uh, and i used as an example that i'm um i know how to make websites i made my own website um but i don't enjoy doing it it takes a lot of time so i just reach out to win uh here on uh here as a in the network to, about doing some uh work for me so yeah fantastic also, also pay your interns 
<laughs> it's fine. If you pay, don't pay them, find out if the university does, but every that all interns should be paid, please. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I will say that for me, paying interns has been kind of a personal mission because I was never able to have an internship when I was in college because when I was in college, they weren't paid and I was desperately filling up all my hours with paid work. So, you know, that is, uh, that is important in terms of uh, being able to survive as a young person was being able to do work that was relevant to what you wanted to do after college, but also having the ability to make ends meet and feed yourself. That is, uh, is great. And there are some schools that have internships that are required and the kids are getting credit for it. And also some of those schools actually don't allow the interns to be paid, which I find a little problematic. Um, and interesting, but mm, I would okay. say I'll yeah. chime in and say some, somebody in our group who I don't think is still here said that she hires a lot of uh, university students um, and uh, helps them also to get their first you know, real job out of university, which I thought was a great idea, but they are also responsible for finding the next intern and training that person and one one of her university student interns also went to um, the lengths of making a video training document for the next person which is great material to have I thought you know okay. that's great creating a video library for onboarding employees um, future employees I think is great and you know great experience for the the intern absolutely I always say that um good people hang out together. And so one of the things that I've done in the past is asking our fantastic intern to recommend another intern. Mm -hmm. And so I had for a while a really steady um, thread where I think I had like one internship that was passed along four or five times that you know from one intern to another is like this is my young friend from one yep. of my classes <laughs> so asking your intern your current intern when they are getting ready to leave if they know somebody else absolutely absolutely so that's fantastic all right other suggestions we've got about two minutes left to go and maybe laura you want to share what what's next for lioness Absolutely. So I'll put it in the chat again. Um, but as Lioness Networking is now a monthly event, we've already set a date for early June. Um, so you can sign up now and get reminders and make sure that you take part in that uh, discussion. So let me put that back in the chat. Um, it's also included in the PowerPoint link um, that was shared earlier. There's a second page that includes some major links that has that registration. And then when we send out the follow-up to this, we'll also include a registration there. So there's, it's very easy to find. <laughs> awesome. All right. Any last words on hiring external, internal VA? Sounds like a lot of people are looking for just great assistance. Um, our, I will say that our group came up with one absolutely fabulous and surefire solution for all of our problems and that's cloning i mean it's not wrong <laughs> <laughs> not wrong not terribly practical i'm afraid <laughs> and time travel as one said time yep. travel yes yes <laughs> the harry potter solution yeah. all right folks great to see everybody have a terrific rest of your week take care bye-bye mm -hmm.